Just a few technical reminding notes before we get started. If you experience any issues with your audio or video during the conference, just refresh your browser and that should take care of everything. If you have any questions for our speakers or panel members, please do feel free to post your questions on the video wall, which is on the right hand side of your screen. We will share with our speaker at the end of the session and they will reply to you through the video wall or through the email afterwards. If you'd like to connect with our speakers, please move to the home lobby page. You can find the speaker by typing their names under networking tab on the right hand corner of your screen. We welcome all of our audience to interact with each other through our networking features. And also please feel free to tag us on our social media handles with the hashtag aim digital. Hello everyone. And now on to our last but not the least session. We have an exciting keynote up ahead by Mr. Arman Sarhadar, who is the CEO, founder of Volt Security Systems AG. He will be talking on the topic, future of blockchain and its impact on supply chain and fighting the pandemic. Just a quick reminder to our audiences present here today, please feel free to post your questions on the right side of the chat wall and keep the engagement going. Mr. Arman, the stage is yours. Hello, my name is Arman Sahaba. I'm the CEO and founder of Home Security Systems AG in Switzerland. Uh, I want to say thank you to the annual investment meeting and the United Arab Emirates for giving me the opportunity to talk today about the future of blockchain and its impact on supply chains and fighting the pandemic. First, uh, I want to talk about the consumer and regulatory requirements to show you the impact of COVID on blockchain, we have to take one step back to the pre-COVID area. For several years until now, consumers are more and more concerned about quality, sustainability, and climate impact of products. For example, in food, more people buy local, original products and organic products. Certifications, quality assurances, supply chain in general, became a topic for consumers. Reports emerged that even certified products were not up to standards, for example, in regard to organic certifications. Frameworks were established and are becoming more popular by which governments dictate to companies quality requirements. So I believe that the customer behavior is getting more and more important uh, in order to get the supply chains in the right direction. Um, let's go over to the supply chains um, in general. Supply chain issues as it is. Um, and let's talk or let's speak about the here and now so you understand where we're coming from. This year, at the beginning of the COVID crisis, the lack of global connectivity and data exchange in supply chains were exposed. A lack of dairy products emerged and some um, were available and access shortly. Uh, other supply chains encountered great disruptions. As bad as COVID was and still is, a crisis is always a chance for change. The impact of COVID on blockchain, consumer behavior, regulations, and COVID created challenges and requirements. The disruption which came with COVID gives companies the opportunity to revise processes and to tackle inefficiencies. This is exactly what blockchain can provide. Platforms for data transmission and data exchange with the highest reliability and security. Platforms for interoperability, process optimizations, and optimizations. Future of blockchain and building trust in blockchain. For supply chains, management, and optimization, blockchain is not enough on its own. Blockchain can provide astonishing links, connections, integrations, Blockchain can make different systems interoperable to work together. To use the full potential of blockchain, we need three things. 
to provide standards in data integration and exchange, to meet transparency and privacy requirements of companies, clients, and regulators, for example, with emission systems, and to connect blockchain with our or with other technologies. At more security systems, we are combining permission blockchains with technologies such as NFC, RFID, QR codes, and GPS. Working with permission blockchain meets all requirements. Companies decide what and how much they want to disclose. Clients can rely on privacy and regulations can be met without compromising security. In speaking about building trust that we provide is a secure ledger for data exchange where companies can decide what they want to share with each other and with everyone else while the data companies decide to keep private and secret with the best available security. But when it comes to the future of blockchain and building trust in blockchain, the supply chain sector is just one of many. If we take the finance sector, for instance, uh, as you know, banks, institutions, funds, and others have been at the forefront of blockchain adoption at the very beginning. COVID will undoubtedly accelerate the implementation of blockchain technology and replacement of old processes. There are many other sectors and applications for blockchain technology, international trade, logistics, supply chain management, international standards, certifications. Those are areas of applications where traditional industrial sectors are affected. In my opinion, public trust in blockchain will strongly accelerate once the end consumers see blockchain in their everyday life, such as banking applications, trading applications, certificates for quality origin production conditions. So now you're asking yourself, well, if blockchain is that great for supply chains, why, no, why everyone is not actually implementing it as we speak? Well, there's an issue because lots of companies, especially here in Europe, they are not very keen when it comes to new technology or implementing new technology because in their mindset, they believe, well, it's working for us right now and it's continue working for us in the future because they are afraid of change. And that, I think, is a very, very important issue when we that right now. And the second thing is big companies actually mixing up blockchain with cryptocurrencies. And cryptocurrencies basically was just one application of blockchain technology, you know? And you, there's nothing actually to compare to cryptocurrencies when we talk about blockchain implementing in supply chains. Because the blockchain we had 10 years ago at the time of Bitcoin is nothing to compare with the top blockchain what we have today. It totally reinvented itself because it's definitely more energy efficient, scalable, sustainable, and we have the GDPR compliance. By saying that is, um, a lot of big companies don't even know that they can actually add blockchain technology to their legacy system. Which means if you are running a system for your company and for your supply chain solution, you know, you can use with an API, which is basically an interface, a blockchain technology at the back end. So you can have all the crucial information, all the important information secured. And that, I think, is also a very important issue. We are in a situation where big companies have to be more educated, and this education process takes, unfortunately, some time. And I think that's really the reason why a lot of big companies or uh, big cap companies are actually holding back implementing this technology into their system. And I really believe once we actually um, 
jump over this hurdle and, and, and convince companies with an educational decision that this is actually the right solution to use, that blockchain will be actually the future and will implement it actually in each and every company which have crucial information and is involved in supply chains. You want to make a supply chain management as perfect as you can get. So, but just saying that, um, I think we covered a lot of issues about the regulatory issues, about the customer behavior, and uh, about the future of blockchain. Um, and uh, I want to actually state that blockchain as it is, is just a, a technology which has a lot of benefits when you actually implement it right with other technologies, as I said, stated before, MFC, RFID, QR code, or GPS. When you combine that with the blockchain technology, then you definitely have a system which is uh, not only secure, sustainable, scalable, but it's up to the time where we are living right now. Thank you, Mr. Arman, for giving a great keynote and sharing your insights with us. To our audiences, if you'd like to connect with our speakers, please move to the Home Lobby page. You can find the speakers by typing their names under Networking tab on the right hand of your screen. We welcome all of our audience to interact with each other on our chat wall. This may be an end to our Future Cities conference program. However, we do have a lot of activities lined up for you. We would encourage you to explore other activities that we have in store for you. Thank you all for tuning in and stay safe.